right, we've talked about the period of the zygote and the period of the embryo. Now we're going to march into the final stage of pregnancy. But if you look here, it actually takes up six months of a nine month pregnancy. It's the longest period of time, but it's known as the period of the fetus. So let's learn about the period of the fetus. So the period of the fetus is different from the zygote and the embryo because we do not talk about this in terms of days or weeks, but rather we talk about this in terms of months. And there's a lot that goes on here. Easily there could be a chapter on each one of these months. Some things that are consistent month to month is that things continue to mature and specialize and become much more advanced and just grow and get bigger. We're constantly getting bigger in the stage of the fetus. So this, this is where we see the rapid and most noticeable growth. And this is where most of our systems from our cardiovascular, our respiratory, our nervous, our digestive systems, they start to function. And a fetus looks a lot more like a baby as compared to a zygote or an embryo. But that being said, although I could easily fill an hour on each of these months, we're gonna go through each of these months and just give you one or two highlights of the month. So what's something significant that happens in the third month of uh, gestational age? Well, this is when sexual development occurs. What actually happens up to this point is all embryos develop as default as females. And so at the very first month of our fetal development, we all tend to have the predecessors to what will be a feminine genital structure. However, if enough testosterone is released and absorbed at this stage, then we're gonna see the shift from feminine characteristics to masculine characteristics. That is the internal tube that would become the vaginal canal now moves and becomes an external tube known as the penis and the ovaries would descend though not all the way, but they would move more into place to become testicles. So this release of testosterone can really change the structure of the genitals. And so if something atypical is going to happen in terms of sexual development, it could begin to happen at this point in time. So the role of hormones at our third month of gestational age cannot be overstated. It's usually impactful on us. In terms of a major milestone that happens in the fourth month of, of gestational age, well, this is when the fetus becomes strong enough to impact their environment in a way that the parent can feel it. This at first feels like butterfly kisses, a lot of people say, just kind of little wiggles, little vibrations that could be a rumbling in the intestines or, or maybe gas, but they're not. They seem to be consistent and coming from a new location in the body and they are little vibrations made from fetal movement. At the fifth month in gestation, what we find here is the growth of really two cool, very unusual things. We see the growth of lanugo and vernix. So lanugo is little tiny white hair, almost like peach fuzz, that covers the full body of the fetus. This helps them to keep warm. Now they're not as round as they were in the stage of the embryo. They're getting big, their arms and legs are getting longer. And in order to keep those extremities warm, they need this hair to keep them warm. They don't have enough body fat to regulate their temperature yet. Another thing that grows is vernix. And vernix is a white cottage cheese waxy coating that covers the outside and around the brows and around the skin of the fetus. Vernix actually helps to keep the skin waterproof. It's the idea that if you ever went for a swim too long or did the dishes and your fingers looked all pruny and raisiny, uh, this is protecting the fetus from becoming too pruny and too wrinkly. So the vernix is waterproofing and the lanugo is a bit of a insulation system to help regulate and keep the body at a good temperature. At six months in gestation, this is when the fetus reaches a major neurological milestone. And that is because neurogenesis is almost complete. Almost all the nerve cells the offspring will ever have are now created and, and now present in their nervous system. And because of this, we can test and determine certain things about the fetus. Now when they kick, we can measure it in much more clear ways and we can feel their movement better. And depending on their movement, we can test to see if they can move in response to different taste preferences the amniotic fluid will actually taste like and smell like what the parent ate. So if the something spicy or something sweet or tart or bland like bananas, and we feel the fetal movements, they can respond and show taste preferences. They'll also respond to things like light. If you shine a flashlight right on the belly, they can actually respond to light. And they'll also respond to music and to voices at this stage. 
Important to note that six months in gestation is currently the legal limit for abortions in many places in Canada because of this neurogenesis milestone, because it is almost nearly possible for most offspring to live on their own if they were to be born early at this point in time, and because of the fact that they are so aware of their surroundings. Now in terms of seven months in gestation, this is when we truly reach what many people call the age of viability. This can be earlier, it can be as early as 22 weeks in gestation, but a little bit later than that, the chances are much more great that we can almost save almost all infants who are otherwise healthy, but just come a bit early. And that's because in seven months, this is when we see really advanced lung development and really good body temperature regulation. They're showing the key things they'll need to survive on their own outside of the womb. We also start to see lots of brain specialization uh, due to the fact that they're sensitive to all the different sensations in the sixth month. Come the eight month in gestation, there's nothing too new to add, except for the lanugo, that clear hair or peach fuzz, it starts to shed. And the reason why it starts to shed is because the fetus is now putting on a lot of body fat. They're quickly gaining in their body fat stores and that's helping them to stay warm. And in the ninth and final month, what we find here is most fetuses start to get in position for birth. And that is, I'm gonna use my little assistant here, is they go head down and with their back of their head facing out. So we want to see this position where it's kind of the parent would feel like their back and their bum if they rub their if they if the parent were to rub their belly they would feel the back and the bum of the fetus and the head is out and down the face facing inward towards the parent and this is the best position for birth uh, if, if they were down but their face is out that's going to lead to a lot of pain in the birthing process because the hardest part of the infant's head is going to be going right against the parent's spinal column and tailbone, leading to a lot of what we call back labor. It's really painful. So if it's down and the back of the head is there, that's the best position for birth. We also see a ton of brain specialization where the brain is getting organized in, in terms of its occipital lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, so it's able to navigate and make sense of the world outside the womb. And that is our fetal development.